the initial play, I was in disbelief. Like, I just didn't believe that he was hurt that bad. On the goal line and recovered, it looked like maybe by Brandon. On the as crazy as it sounds, I knew exactly what my injury was when I got up off the ground. I think Drew Brees got hurt on that play, going for that fumble. I can remember uh, being up in the press box and as he came off the sideline, onto the sidelines, I can remember Cam Cameron saying, through the headsets, oh, it's not good. Unblocked, caught the offense by surprise. Uh, it's a real, real uncommon type of shoulder dislocation, but I knew what was wrong with him by watching it on TV. and. Arm was not moving forward. You know, he went down. Oh, that arm gets hyperextended. And I just knew that was it. We were gone. He dives in to the pile. And this will give the Broncos the football. The fourth pick in the 2004 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Phillip Rivers, quarterback, North Carolina State. Uh, we talk tells me there is a deal because Thank you. by taking Rivers, it tells you there is a significant trade here in the works between the Chargers and the New I knew it right away. I mean, prior to the draft, Cam Cameron, our offensive coordinator, pulled me in his office. Brian Schottenheimer, my quarterback coach, pulled me in his office. Marty Schottenheimer pulled me in his office, and they said, listen, we believe in you, but we're telling you right now, they're going to draft somebody or they're going to bring somebody in to compete with you, to take your job. I think Drew looked at the draft um, when they took Phillip as, as a challenge. He loves competition in anything. He loves competition. So when Phillip came in, you know, he was, he was the young guy there to take Drew's, Drew's role. And so Drew was like, it's, it's only going to make me better. As hard as that was to, to hear and a tough pill to swallow, that's just reality and that's life and that's the way it goes. That's competition. And I wanted it to bring out the best of me. So I made the commitment to everything I possibly could to put me and my team in the best position to succeed. The off-season changes that he made uh, th throughout every, everything he did, from his diet to uh, his mental approach to his throwing mechanics, uh, he. Uh, went through a uh, remarkable uh, change and became a Pro Bowl quarterback virtually overnight. It was the most dramatic transformation I think I've ever seen in an athlete in one year. I ended up winning the job over Flutie and Rivers and being the starter and, and we had you know one of those kind of storybook seasons from where we were. You know we, we went from 4 and 12 to 12 and 4. Won the division, home playoff game, biggest turnaround in franchise history. The bottom line is this. We're the San Diego Chargers, you know that's right. and we are number one in the AFC West, and we're going to stay. Well, Breeze had a, a, an enormous role in their success. Uh, he was a, a dynamic player in 2004 and 2005. That growth from, you know, my first three years to that year and that moment was a huge pivotal point for 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 me and my mindset in my career. standing on the goal line and recovered it looked like maybe by Brandon of the Broncos. John Lynch knocked it out. We were in a suite with his friends and in our family and I think Drew Brees got hurt on that play going for that fumble. You know he went down and I just knew that was it. We were gone. Oh, that arm gets hyper extended in a very scary position. I thought to myself, you know, this is probably the last time that I ever put on a Charger uniform. And then reality really sinks in. I say, this might be the last time I ever put on a football uniform. He walked off the field with his arm just locked up. And it was the strangest, strangest position, you know, of anyone that I've ever seen with an arm like that. I can remember specifically the injury happened and you know as a coach you're always kind of oh, I wonder how you know how bad is it and I can remember uh, being up in the press box and as he came off the sideline onto the sidelines I can remember Cam Cameron saying oh it's not good. Yeah, I was in disbelief like I just didn't believe that he was hurt that bad you know I you know we were very close and and like I said we worked out together and so to see him kind of holding his shoulder I just was thinking like Oh, you know, it's just a bad spring. It's, it's not that bad, it'll be okay. I knew exactly what my injury was when I got up off the ground. 
Um, I could feel that basically my shoulder was out of place. It was a dislocated right throwing shoulder. I mean, if you could <laughs> rank the worst injuries that you could have as a quarterback, I mean, that's right up there. Well, I happened to be watching the game on TV and I saw uh, him get hurt and they showed it again on uh, replay. And I could tell that uh, he had, had, was diving for a ball down on his goal line. Then some lineman fell across his body and made his arm go away over his head and he walked out with his right shoulder caught and he was, as he came off the sidelines. And having been there and watching that in slow motion and watching him walk off, uh, I knew that he had uh, knocked his, his humeral head out the socket inferiorly, which is down to the bottom, which is real unusual. It's called a subluxation erecti, and it was locked there out the, the bottom of the socket. As I'm walking off, my whole body is just, just numb. It's just, it's numb with shock. It wasn't really so much the pain, it was just knowing the reality of what this was. And even when the news came down, you know, how serious the injury was, I knew with his work ethic that Drew would bounce back. You know, the type of makeup, the character of Drew Brees, you thought if there was going to be a guy that was going to have some adversity in his life and be able to overcome it, you knew it would be him. And just took a deep breath and said, you know, one day at a time and, and let's see how severe this is. A few days later, I was contacted by Drew and his agents, and he came to see me in, in Birmingham, and I knew he was gonna to have to have it operated on. Dr. Andrews was known to be the, the guy to go to, and I remember him examining Drew, and when he was examining Drew's arm, he was kind of yanking his arm and pulling it up, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, he's gonna do more damage, you know, because he was really kind of getting in there. I remember him looking at me and saying, basically, I've, I've never, quite seen anything like this. I know that it's, it's serious. I know I can fix it. I just don't know exactly what I'm gonna need to do quite yet because I, I think once I get in there, I might find out some more. His main deal was that he wanted to know did, he have to, did I have to cut to fix it? Or could I do it arthroscopically? And I think he was worried if I had to cut, make an incision that he knew that that was a harder thing to come back from and he was of course worried about his career. I knew I had torn a labrum pretty se severely um, but there was rotator cuff damage too we just didn't know the extent of it. So when I went under I really didn't know the extent of what that surgery was going to be. Well, we put the scope in and then we were able to truly identify all of the pathology and he had a 360 degree labral tear all the way around his shoulder, particularly involving the bottom of his shoulder where the labrum attaches to the socket. And the thing that we were a little bit surprised with was that he had a complete tear of the undersurface of his supraspinatus and infraspinatus, his rotator cuff, and we had to repair all of that. I was paged in the middle of the surgery and I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, something's wrong, something's wrong. And Dr. Andrews just, just was on the phone with his sweet southern accent just saying, Brittany, just want to let you know, everything's going great, everything's good, you know, and then just hung up and that was it. I'm still coming out of it, but I'm just, I'm down and he puts his hand on my shoulder and in true Dr. Andrews fashion, he said, if I did that surgery a hundred times, I couldn't, I couldn't do, it, do as it as good as I did it this time. And, I, <laughs> and it kind of per perked up and I was like, really? And I wanted to plant that positive seed in his mind so that he, knew that he could get well. From a man like that, with a reputation like that, to say if I did that surgery a hundred times, I couldn't do it as well as I just did it. That was, that, that helped me breathe a sigh of relief. And it was groggy and that was the first question, did they have to cut, did they have to cut? Did you have to cut? Said, did you have to cut? And he's like, no. He said we were able to do it arthroscopically. arthroscopically. He said, how did it go? I told him. That was the most amount of anchors that I have ever put in anyone's shoulder in my entire life, and I probably will ever put in someone's shoulder again. He said you got 13 anchors in there, 11 in your uh, labrum and two in your rotator cuff. I don't, you know, where do you go from there? I don't even know what that means. It made it a lot better prognosis to be able to put all that back arthroscopically because it was less trauma and less injury by surgery to the shoulder joint. And then I knew, okay, it's all about the rehab. And I said, all right, what, what's the rehab look like? Eight months. It's like, whew, eight months. 
you know, that's a daunting thing to, to think about. And Even after Drew had had the surgery, the, the Chargers were still saying to him, we're, we're still going to take you back. We are still our guy. You know, you had that scenario that was a little misleading, and then you were kind of being pulled in a couple different directions. My sense was that the Chargers were not going to uh, hang on to, to Breeze, that they'd committed themselves long-term to Rivers. He felt that uh, their future was Rivers. Uh, they, had, uh, they were committed to him. He was the guy that uh, the new general manager, A.J. Smith, had, had uh, selected, identified, and, and uh, was very enthusiastic about. You know, I was going into an off-season where I don't have a contract. They're just looking for an excuse to put Philip Rivers on the field. It was interesting because, you know, Drew had something to prove. He was a guy fresh out of surgery. You know, you had some people saying that he would never play football again, you know, and then you had some people saying that, look, he, he can come back from this. This is good. You know, we've, you've gotten all the results. You know, he's, he's back, his throwing speed, you know, everything's back, his arm strength's back, but, you know, he still had to prove himself. As much as I wanted to believe in my heart, you know, that I was going to come back and I was going to come back stronger, I mean, that was my mindset and my, you know, everything in my being was saying that. Still, there was reality. <laughs> I hope I can come back and do this.